And we welcome you back live. Thanks so much for being with us. The cup of weights. It's season 18 WPT Rolling Thunder final table in beautiful Sacramento, California. Started with 250 players. We are down to the last four. And as you see there, it is uh, really very tight and a lot of money up top. So the next person to uh, to walk out of here, $85,000. The person that wins this, 279000 So almost a $200,000 swing when there's only four chairs remaining at this table and only 60 big blinds to 42 big blinds separates them so they're all they're really close so the blinds are <laughs> going up it's 25 50 and a ante of 50 so each pot is going to start with 125,000 in the center before anyone even looks at their cards Tony here the first to go in the cutoff he's got a king and a nine he's going to go up to 105,000 Robert with slightly better hand a king and a ten is going to make that call up to 105 Kevin in the small blind is going to get out of the way with his 9-6. Over to Jake. He's got queen six. Which, which box? On your left. On my left? Yes, sir. Okay. He's going to fold 335,000 in the center. And heads up to a flop we go. Couple of threes and a five roll out. So Robert with the best of it still. Check, check to the turn. Jack of Diamonds comes out, so three diamonds floating around out there gives Tony some more possibilities to complete the flush. Check, check, and the river <coughs> is an eight of spades, so Robert's hand holds. So far, they're both happy to just check this down and hope to show down their king high. King high. And so Robert's going to pick up another pot, 335000 I think we're all, happy. we're all happy to see you. <laughs> the, last, the last dealer was good, though. See a new uh, denomination there on the table with the pink chips making entrance. And Kevin there adjusting his rather robust stack of time extension chips should he need to use those of course the uh, the story throughout much of this final table has been that tony blasted through basically his entire stack each player starts with eight got down to just one but the action clock by protection poker gives each player eight of those chips to uh, to start at this final table and the time extension chip once you're out uh, that's that's a wrap you've got 30 seconds for each hand and then it is declared dead I uh, haven't seen that happen a lot. So they're, they're diligent about reminding the players if they're out that the time is winding down, but it does call for the action to be forced along. Jake here with a decision of his own, thinking about this with his pocket eights in the small blind. Kevin behind him in the uh, on the button raised it up to 100,000. Last time Jake had eights, he doubled through Eric's ace king. It was a pretty big pot, pretty big swing in the tournament right before the break. Three bet there from Jake up to 405,000, and Kevin is going to step off that. So the orange chips are 5,000, the green are 25, and the new pink chips are 100,000, and the uh, yellow, blue, oblong shaped are the time extension chips. So when they start moving those pink chips around, you know it's getting serious. So we lost Eric. That is one storyline that's gone. He was trying to go back to back. We have Jake at his seventh WPT final table trying to get his first win. Tony Tran is a WPT champion trying to get his second win. Jake going up to 105 with his ace jack of spades. Nice hand for him on the button. Robert in the big blind going to come along. Makes a call of 105, up to 105 with his 8-6 off and a 6 in the window, but a queen and a 10 also dropping out there. So a little bit of something for everybody. 
Jake with plenty of possibilities, and Robert with the best of it with that pair of sixes. Jake's going to lead out here with 100,000 after Robert's check. Robert makes the call, pair of sixes. There's the turn, it's a nine. It's an interesting card for both. Sure is. See Robert's pair still holding strong right now, but Jake with plenty of possibilities. Jake could bluff at this, but I doubt he will. Oh, we're not gonna even see that because Robert's gonna fire into it. 180,000 from Robert. Pretty strong move with a pair of sixes there, huh? Yeah, he does have the guard shot to go with it. Jake's gonna make the call, so. Jake's just gonna call. 845,000 in the center, and there is the seven. Robert is gonna complete his straight. Yeah, there's a lot of cards that would have been more interesting to see how Jake reacted to the river. I think this one is just going to get a quick fold from Jake. But Big bet coming in here, 475,000. <coughs> 475, About a quarter of the stack for Jake, who is going to let it go. 1.3 million go in the direction of Robert. Yeah, I would have loved to see how that pot turned out if a deuce came on the river. Robert still would have had the best hand, but Jake would have had a stronger range, but might have just checked, checked back ace high trying to win it that way, or he might have turned it into a bluff. I'm not sure. 3.5 million in chips, 70 big blinds for Robert now. 35% of the chips in play with four players. It's a nice run out for that hand. See tournament director John Q in the background, or at least his belly button. <laughs> I don't even know why you had to call that out. I mean, everyone <laughs> can tell that's his belly button. It's a very distinct <laughs> belly button. Uh, Jake going up to 100,000 here with, with Queen Jack. Tony on the button, Jack 7, says pass. And look at this, Robert with nice starting hand. Ace and a king for our chip leader. I think we're probably going to see around 375 here from Robert. Up to. 380. There we go. Pretty close, my friend. Another raise to 380,000. 380, the three bet from Robert and Kevin quickly out of there. Let's see what Jake decides to do. He is going to pass. Robert's getting some cards, too. When he does, he's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, the tough stack size for Jake. Can't really do anything about it with Queen Jack off. Or really, any of the middle things that he'd be opening with there. Coming to you live from Thunder Valley Casino Resort, just outside of Sacramento. It's WPT Rolling Thunder. Thanks so much for being with us. Tyler Patterson, Dave Farah. On the call with you this afternoon, and we've got just four players remaining, all vying for that top prize of over a quarter million dollars, $279,000 off a $5,000 buy-in. Be a pretty good day. Over to Robert on the button, a nine and an eight. We're reaching for chips again. Here we go. Feel a little momentum building for Robert yeah, now. Yeah, he's, he's really starting to open it up a little bit. He's played fairly conservative throughout the, uh, the course of this, but he's starting to open up a bit of a lead, and... He, uh, he's jumping up a lot of these pots, 110,000. Jake in the big blind here, going to make the call to 110,000 with his ace eight offsuit. You guys all play pretty quickly. A couple of jacks and a five. And Robert again reaching for chips. 295 in the center. There's just a small bet of 70,000. Jake's not going to be folding ace high on this flop, at least not yet. King rolls off on the turn. 
that card is about equally likely to hit each player. Probably maybe a little bit heavier towards uh, Robert's hand, so Robert okay. might use that to bluff, especially his stack does threaten Jake's a lot. He decides to check with it. Checking with nine high in this spot is basically just giving up. I don't expect him to bet again. Queen comes off. A lot of paint on that board. Jake first to act. Jake is considering bluffing, but not really. Now Robert has a chance to try to get Jake off of ace high or a five. That's basically it. I don't think he's going to get a king to fold, and he's probably not going to get a queen to fold. 180,000. He goes with a medium-sized bet, which is looks very credible towards a king or a queen, but Jake is trying to sniff it out right now. He knows Robert would check back a decent amount of king highs on the flop. And he's not bluffing with ace high very often. He Doesn't lets it go. Man, talk about that momentum building for Robert. And 615,000, not a monster pot by any stretch of the imagination, but just good play and showing that he's very willing to take risks when he thinks he's able to move his opponent off of a better hand. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's all good. Just those cards rolling off were a little bit more in Robert's range than Jake's. And for the first time at this final table, we have somebody knocking on the door of having four million chips. A big part of that is also just Jake's stack size. It's even if Jake didn't really want to believe Robert there, he wanted to make a stand, but it's just such a big part of his stack. 110, and yeah, you heard a comment. I don't know who said it, but... Robert's trying to win every hand and <laughs> woke well up with a pocket pair here and it's, he just used his standard raise up to 110. Yeah, I think it was Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Seems most likely. Yeah, to <laughs> Tony said he was hoping <laughs> hoping Kevin was going to do something about it. <laughs> so a four and a three and a call from Tony out of position. Suited connector is not too bad. It's a little small, but uh, you're getting a really good price, so it's going to so continue. The twos hold up here for Robert. Tony, the first act with his 4-3, going to make the check. Over to Robert. Reaching for chips again, 100,000. Tony quickly folds, and Robert keeps his streak going. Of winning, I believe, every hand since <laughs> we came back from the break. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the truth. They were talking about chicken wings and pizza on the break. I wonder if uh, Robert ate something that made him uh, a little fired up. I guess so. He got some of Frank's famous wings. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's pretty decent. So in the cutoff, Kevin has a couple of cowboys. Just a hundred. Sure. <laughs> sure. Let's see what happens. Tony in the small blind, Queen 10. Seems like a pretty inviting price for a Queen 10. Yeah, really all three options are open with Queen 10 in the small blind. You can three bet with it. If you're three betting every time you have Queen 10 off in the small blind, you're three betting too much. Or the bold uh, option. Yeah, right? calling is a good price, but playing that out of position with only 35 big blinds is pretty tough, so folding is fine. And here we go, <coughs> Robert, 8-6, making the call. Oh, boy, four, five, six. All right, now, excuse me, five, six, seven, eight. So open ender for Robert now. Wouldn't this be something if he makes the call on a couple of kings and then gets there? Well, it looks like this tournament's going to be over soon. Robert's just going to win every pot. Yeah. 75,000 from Kevin, who's... Again, trying to play coy, but it's going to work here. Well, Robert's going to at least call, but he actually could three. He could raise here, and if he does check raise here, he will represent spades if they come in. 
280,000, so another 205 back over to Kevin with his Kings. It's an interesting spot for Kevin. They're pretty deep. I don't know if he's going to want to just try to shut him out and end the pot. I think they're probably a little too deep for that, especially with some other short stacks. He doesn't want to punt off that much. And uh, we talk we say ICM, you know, just the value of the, the cash value of his place in the tournament, not just the chips that he has. Um, so I think he's just going to call. Uh, any spade is probably going to do it for Robert. I think he's going to make a big bet and win the pot. Another jack. That's an interesting card. I don't know if Robert's going to continue bluffing with that card. I think he would have uh, yeah, probably just the, the cards that make him a straight, the cards that give him a pair. No, he does keep firing. A jack is certainly possible in Robert's hand. So Kevin doesn't love it. I'm pretty sure he's not gonna fold, but I don't he might uh trying to decide if he's going to shove to try to deny the equity that Robert has in his hand, which would usually be spades. S sometimes it's open enders and uh, there's a double gutter in 8-9 also. So he could just sh shove all in to try to make it so th that Robert can't see those cards. Um, but he's just going to run into a jack sometimes when he does that. So I think he might decide to just call. But then he's going to have a real tough decision on a lot of rivers. So there is the call up to 1.4. Kevin's King's good right now, but to the river we go, and the open ender does not get there. It's an eight, which hits Robert's hand, but it's not the card that he needed. It's really interesting because he, he could continue bluffing. That card actually does is a scary enough card. It could win him the pot sometimes, uh, but it's not going to get a jack to fold. He's not probably not going to get an overpair to fold. Uh, so since there's not that many cards, not ma that many hands that are better than eights that would fold, I think Robert's just going to check and just hope that his eights are good, like he beat ace high somehow. So Robert with the check over to Kevin. This is a big pot, 1.4 million in the middle. And, yeah, Kevin act like he's going to think about it, but shows the kings. And look at that. Now 3.4 million for both of them. Almost 800,000 chips for Kevin, 755,000 to be exact, that are new going his direction. It really remains a back and forth battle between these guys. That was a big pot for Kevin. It's now the chip leader. And again. good decisions. Yep. Was that almost a smile? <laughs> Kevin's giving some smiles. Not a lot of words, but he's giving some smiles. <laughs> <coughs> Not rooting for any particular player, but I kind of wanted to see a spade just to see if uh, if Robert was going to pile and if Kevin <laughs> would have called with it or not. Kevin's 30 years old. I would have pegged him as like 25 based on his looks. Yeah, these guys are all pretty si similar in age. Um, Eric's a little older than the rest, I think, but not much. I think they're all very close. Robert limps with the 9-4, and Kevin checks back the jack-10 off. $50,000 50, bet there for Robert. Kevin obviously very much in control here with his pair of 10s. This bet is just because they're blind versus blind, and most of the time both players are going to miss. And the 9 has... Some value with the 8 and the 10 out there.
Kevin going to raise his top pair for value and just to be fine with getting the hand over with. Kevin raised to 165,000 and Robert Fuller. Yep, so Kevin now with a little momentum shifting his way. Things started off pretty hot there for Robert coming back from the break, but Kevin starting to take some of that shine for himself. Hundred and ten is a raise from Robert. So Robert continuing with the uh, the strategy of just building some of these pots, putting the pressure on. Still has three point four million behind. Gonna scoop a small one there. Get the blinds. It seems like it's that's kind of bugging Tony a little bit. Tony doesn't like that uh, Robert's running him over. Well, it's, it's his game. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you doing? Here? Right. Frank is instruct. I believe that's Frank. <laughs> instructing him to turn his hat around. <laughs> 76ers cap. The rally cap. Let's see what happens. Kevin, an ace and an eight of spades on the button, so he's got position. It hardly seems fair. I mean, the, the rest of the guys don't have caddies on the rail telling them about the how to wear their hats. Uh, it, it's a distinct advantage. Just wish I had somewhere in general in life just to tell me what to do with my underwear. I've never been good at selecting hats. I don't feel like any of them are really that good on me. I just don't know. Can't really do the flat bill thing. I just you look like a fedora guy. I feel like you could, you, you're in Vegas. I will punch you. Right next to you. I'll hit you. Who says that to you? Take it back. Call my mom. <laughs> Mom, did you know that you made a guy that looks like a fedora guy? <laughs> Ugh. Jesus. I thought you'd You're a Vegas that. guy too now, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ten rolls off, so that's quite good news for Tony there. Looks like the rally cap is working. He's going to play coy. He'll check it over to Kevin. Still looking to get something going here with his ace eight, but not much going. Going to need one of those aces to drop off here in order to save this hand for him. Small pot, just 275,000 in the center end. There's the ace. Rally cap didn't work. Now, this is actually going to be an interesting spot for Tony, too, because it's just a kind of a pretty good bluff run out for the guy in position. So I think Kevin might bet this without the ace. Tony might end up deciding the hero call here. Hundred and eighty thousand is the <coughs> bet from Kevin with the ace and good Tony fold. gets away. Good fold from Tony. Again, yeah, not a huge pot, you know, I mean four hundred and fifty five thousand <laughs> out there and I mean that he had a piece of it, but he <laughs> immediately turns the hat back around. <laughs> <My man. laughs> Lots of advice from Frank out there. In the final four, it's March Madness going on here. Who do you think is going to win the tournament this year? Do you have any predictions? I haven't followed closely enough. Um, I'm the Northwest guy, so I kind of always root for Gonzaga. Okay. Um, See that. Zag's looking pretty good. It's interesting that Kansas. San Diego State won so many games, but they probably won't be that competitive when it comes down to it. It's always the question of – Quality of competition, right? I mean, you, you yeah. wouldn't see somebody like a Baylor or a Kansas, in my opinion, losing to UNLV. Uh, right. You know, yeah. San Diego State's obviously a very good team, and everyone has, you know, bumps in the road and everything else. But 
Um, I, I do like how wide open it is this year. It's not just, you know, the Dukes and Kentuckys of the world that are going to dominate everyone. There's there's really kind of – anyone can go in there and win this thing. It's still very wide open. To the flop we go. It's a 9, a 6, and a 7, all hearts. <coughs> no hearts in either of the players' hands. There is an 8 that's sitting there for Robert, and Jake did hit a 7. Very close right now, and a queen rolls off, so Robert now getting – the better of the pairing, as well as having the open ender. Good. Jake considering betting here, because the seven could still be the best hand, and he could get some value from hands that would draw. Oh man, it's a scary looking card, isn't it? So sure Ro is. Robert gets there with the uh, with the straight. Not that he really needed it at that point, but he gets there. Uh, but man, that's ugly. I think Onto it's straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you said, it's just too too much of a lockdown board. There's too much going on. They just wanted to show it down. So the first year they did this tournament. Uh, it happened to be over that first weekend that was the first weekend of March Madness. Oh, and yeah. it was also St. Patrick's Day. So it was just a complete nuts. Like, <laughs> I mean, it was a mess. Quite the show, I bet. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like that's a lot to compete with. Yeah. Yeah, it was – It was. we had we had good times here. At, I mean, there's a couple of cool places to drink and hang out here at Thunder Valley, too. So it was pretty fun. Was St. Patty's Day a big thing in your hometown? Uh, Sacramento does a thing. They don't do a ton. Um, Seattle, there's some Irish pubs and stuff, but it's not uh, It's not like a big parade town or anything. Chicago does a big thing. Right. In Savannah, Georgia, when I lived in South Carolina, Columbia, it was like a big to-do. And then I moved to Vegas, and they were like, yeah, no, we kind of do this every day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I've always personally liked it just because I – I don't know, like beer and Guinness and Irish things in general. Yeah, so yeah. I always like St. Patrick's. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yes. Crappy bands that have one hit. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll do yeah. it. <laughs> Is that Seven Mary Three? Awesome. <laughs> we went to a bar here in this area called the Boxing Donkey, which is perfect. Based on name uh, alone. Perfect for the Sign me up. for St. Patrick's Day. And uh, we watched exactly what you said, like a crappy 90s cover band. And oh. it was really fun. Like, how is there even Eve 6 cover band? Exactly. It was exactly Eve 6. <laughs> Whoa. Speaking, speaking of a 6, yeah, Kevin has 6-7 here for the nuts. Yeah, so Kevin gets the straight. Tony's going to lead out with 250,000. All of a sudden, we got ourselves a little pot that's cooking. So seven and a quarter in the center. Kevin with the nuts. And now Kevin's deciding if uh, if it's more likely Tony's bluffing, he wants to just call and keep Tony firing away, or if he'd like to raise now and get as much value as possible on two streets. Tony's stack size doesn't really warrant the two streets idea, I don't think. So I, I imagine it's probably a call and hope he bluffs again in the river. But we've talked about uh, Tony being a little bit sticky, too. So raising and putting Tony in a tough spot to decide if he's going with the king or not might be might be the, mo the better play also. There he goes, up over the top, 675 from Kevin. And again, Tony, not a lot of extra time to take, just tosses it. 1.4 million, Kevin, 4.2 million chips is the mountain that he is starting to sit on. It's a nice pot for him there. Yeah, I think Vegas gets a little more excited about March Madness than they do about St. Patrick's Day. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you can't bet on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can have a, a Steinholt. No, that's not. That's Oktoberfest, yeah. the Steinholding contest. <laughs> Tried. 
the Hofbrauhaus house thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 You could bet on what guy's going to hold the beer the longest. Yeah, but you know what's better than that? Betting on a month's worth of basketball <laughs> tournaments. <laughs> yeah. One game after another. That. Just, no. March Madness in Vegas is so fun. Uh, Kevin in the small blind here. Another nice starting hand for him. So ace nine, four-handed. Kevin on a stack of 4.1 million. Let's see how he plays this one. Robert did raise it up to 110 on the button. If you're going to do March Madness in Vegas, why don't you come out a little bit early and do the uh, World Poker Tour Venetian. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it's at Venetian, and it starts on the 15th, I think. Well, yeah, and I mean, Selection the Sunday. 13th, starts on the 13th. Starts on the 13th, runs through the 17th, but Selection Sunday is this Sunday, the 15th, so it's right there in that window. So yeah, so just perfect. stick so around for one extra weekend. You're, you're there for just a couple of days. I mean, it's you know, like you said, March 13th is Friday, Selection Sunday, it's right over that window, so it's, it's fantastic. Great time to come to Vegas. So this is a big moment here. Jake all in with his ace eight of clubs and Kevin with the better hand gets pushed off, just not willing to risk it at that point. Jam and Jake huh. once again picks up 220,000 new chips, but um, yeah, big move from him there in order to. Uh, to that was a really interesting <laughs> pot. I'm sorry we were talking about March Madness over that, but uh, <laughs> so Kevin limped a small blind and basically has a trap with ace nine. Huh? If Jake would have raised a little bit, I think he would have shoved the ace nine. And also, it, it plays well. Uh, but Jake just shoves the whole 20 big blinds, 25 big blinds. and yeah, uh, did not expect that to happen at and all. And so Kevin decides not to call it off. I'm kind of surprised he didn't didn't even really grind to, to think about calling it off with the ace nine there. Speaking <coughs> of similar hands, ace nine for Robert this time, raising his standard, so going up to 110. Back over to Kevin on the button this time for Kevin. He's got ace 10. Two seventy-five is the raise for Kevin. Jake in a small blind with his five-four offsuit. Kevin does three bet here. I don't think Jake is taking this seriously, but it's possible he's thinking about a bluff four bet. But I don't think that's really going on. Does burn time extension chip. So in the background, you hear the the level going up in a minute. I think that's what's going on here. Jake is hoping that the level goes up on his button, and so he's taking a little extra time to fold it, so he doesn't have to play the button at a smaller level, because he's not really thinking about playing the four five. So I think that's what's going on. Nice bit of strategy, if that's the case. And Robert gets out of there, and Kevin's going to pick up another pot. I just want to know if it would have worked. <laughs> that's all. That's Maybe he was all. thinking about it. Maybe. I, I still don't think so. I mean, even if, I don't care what physical read you get. You're not just putting your tournament life in line with four or five at this spot. I feel like it could have worked. I think he's just keeping up the charade. I think he would have, uh, I think he's really just messing with the, the position at the different level. Oh, but that, maybe there's another tournament going on. Maybe that wasn't their clock because the, the level didn't go up. Uh, yeah, maybe. maybe uh, <laughs> so maybe I'm just making yeah. it's making it's up whatever. It's a <laughs> some high level move, and no, he's really just like thinking about jamming on 5-4. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, this is a fun final table, man. These uh, different personalities. Like, you really feel the texture amongst these four guys. And Kevin there with his king deuce. Going to take that one down. Scoop up some blinds in the process. You didn't realize I'm, like, the third, your third. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 